Hey guys, I'm Matt, a developer from Ohio. In this video, I'll show you how to set up and use IntelliJ IDEA. Today we'll cover why you need an IDE, downloading and installing IntelliJ IDEA, starting a new project, basic IDE features, and using the IDE features trainer that comes with IntelliJ IDEA. An integrated developer environment, or IDE for short, is basically a text editor for code. Similarly to how you would use something like Microsoft Word to help you with formatting, spelling, and grammar, your IDE will color code your work, point out syntax errors, and help debug your program. Which IDE you use comes down to personal preference, but I would never advise a developer to go without one. IntelliJ is one of the most popular choices for Java, and it's the one we'll be looking at in this video. You can find the IntelliJ IDEA download page by searching for it in any search engine. Click on the download button. On the next page, select your operating system. I'm using a Windows machine, but the majority of what you see in this video should hold for macOS and Linux. The community version of IntelliJ is free, and it's more than enough for most developers. Click on the download button to start downloading the installer. When the download is finished, you can begin the installation process. If you want to change where the IDE is installed, you can select Browse. For most users, the default location is fine. The next screen offers several options. Most of these are up to personal preference. If you don't know what some of these do, then it's pretty safe to say that you don't need them. If you change your mind later, you can go to IntelliJ's Settings menu. The last screen is for a Start Menu folder. Again, most users won't need to change this. Select Install when you're satisfied with your settings. When you open IntelliJ IDEA for the first time, you'll see this prompt. Even if you've used IntelliJ before, I'd recommend just hitting OK to get a clean installation. On the next screen, you can pick a UI theme. Most developers prefer a dark UI because it causes less eye strain when coding for long periods of time. Pick whichever you prefer. Just like with the previous settings, it's easy to change later if you want. We're not going to mess with the default plugins, so you can go ahead and click on Skip Remaining and Set Defaults. Now we're done with the basic setup. This screen is what you'll see every time you open IntelliJ IDEA. You'll usually want to Create New Project or Open. I'll show you how to create a new project. There are a lot of options here for specific kinds of projects. For this video, I'm going to stick with a regular Java project. On your first project, you might need to change the Project SDK at the top of this window. Select New and find your JDK installation. The JDK is the Java Developer Kit, which needs to be installed in order to develop Java applications. If you don't have one installed, IntelliJ will show a download link just below this top section. That link will take you to the Oracle website where you can download and install the most recent JDK. When you're ready, click on Next. If you want to start from scratch, don't select anything on this screen. For this video, I'm going to select the Java Hello World template. This is the last screen before we can start writing code. You just need to enter a project name. You can also change where the project is saved if you want. When you're ready to start coding, select Finish. In the editor, we can see the example program provided by the Java Hello World template. Note that the code is minimized by default. We can click on the plus symbol to the left of a block of code to expand it. We should expect this program to output Hello World to the console. One of the advantages of using an IDE is that we can run the code right here. Click on the green Play button in the top right to run the program. The console that appeared at the bottom of the IDE shows the output Hello World. Don't worry about the exit code zero part. That just means that our program didn't have any errors. Now, let's take a look at the project pane to the left of the code editor. We can see our project as a folder. Inside this folder are all the files relevant to this project. Main.java is saved in the source folder. We can create a new file by right-clicking on Source and selecting New, then Java class. We need to name the file. We can also change it from Class to something else, like Interface, but we don't need to worry about that for now. Let's start writing some code. Notice how IntelliJ immediately starts suggesting keywords as I type. If you press Tab, IntelliJ will fill in the word that it thinks you want. What I want here for the type of this variable is string, not system. If I press Tab, we'll get the first item in the list, which is system. We can either type a few more characters until string is the top result, or use the arrow keys to navigate in this pop-up menu. Of course, we can always type out the whole word. That might seem faster when you're new to coding with assistance, but suggestions are great for writing fast, accurate code. You'll never make a typo when you use tab to autofill a word. 
IntelliJ also comes with some powerful tools, like generating code for common patterns. For example, if we right-click and select Generate, then Constructor, we can avoid the hassle of repeatedly writing generic constructors. I added this Introduce method off-camera, and there's something wrong with it. IntelliJ gives us several signs. The incorrect code is underlined in red. The file name is also underlined in red. A red exclamation mark is shown in the top right, and there are red marks in the scroll bar. Basically, if you see red, you know that there is an error somewhere in your code. IntelliJ is using a technique known as linting to search through our code as we type it. It will catch most simple errors without needing to build and run the code. If we mouse over the red sections or the red tick marks, we can see the specific errors. In this case, IntelliJ doesn't recognize one of these words, because I've left out a quotation mark. If we add it back, the error will go away. The yellow underlines indicate warnings. A warning isn't an error, so it won't stop you from running your program, but it can tell you something useful about your code. The warning we're getting repeatedly here is that our class and methods aren't actually getting used. The last thing I want to talk about is debugging. One of the most important features of an IDE is the debugger, which can be accessed from the green Bug button next to the Play button. To properly use it, we can add breakpoints in our code. A breakpoint is a marker that tells the IDE to pause the program while we look at the output. We can add them by clicking to the left of any line of code. When we run the program in debug mode, the program will stop at each breakpoint before moving on to that line of code. We can press the Resume button in the debug window to let the program run until the next breakpoint. That just about covers the absolute basics of using an IDE. If you want to continue learning about IntelliJ IDEA specifically, I would recommend that you use the IDE Features Trainer, which is a plugin for IntelliJ IDEA. This also gives me a chance to show how to install plugins. Navigate to File, Settings, and Plugins. In the Plugins window, we can type in any search term to find a plugin. I'll type in Trainer. We'll click on the Install button to add IDE Features Trainer to IntelliJ. Once it installs, we'll have to restart the IDE. When we return, there will be a new Learn tab to the far left of the IDE. The IDE Features Trainer will walk you through several interactive lessons. You can either go through each of them in order, or just investigate them as you need them. In this video, we learned what an IDE is, what an IDE can help you with, and how to set up IntelliJ IDEA. We also explored a few common scenarios and showed how you can learn more with the IDE Features Trainer. Now that you're ready to use an IDE, it's time to get out there and start coding. Thanks for watching. Join the conversation by subscribing to this channel or dropping a comment below. If you want to take your skills to the next level, start learning at Codecademy today.